by putting everyone down, no one is elevated. Yeah, exactly. That's what we do. That's our yeah. philosophy. So yeah. we're actually putting niggas down to raise everyone up. Well, yeah, we, we we don't put people down so we can step on them. Mm -hmm. They down in the trenches with us, nigga. Yeah. I know you see when we got fucking 17 subscribers. So we all down here in the <laughs> trenches, nigga. None of us pop in. None of us make it out alive. Nigga. We all are relevant, nigga. <laughs> Damn. <laughs>
anything that he provides, mm -hmm. right? Like if Andrew Huberman was a love doctor, mm -hmm. if he got on Dr. Phil every day and he said, this is how you should do relationships, this is how you should be, and people were taking his advice on like how to do relationships, and then it was revealed like, okay, then this would be a relevant conversation. Mm -hmm. This nigga talks about neurotransmitters. Mm -hmm. What does that have to do with if he texted back fucking Stacy mm -hmm. six years ago? Mm -hmm. Literally nothing. Mm -hmm. So the only reason you would put this out is because you know his name attracts attention which honestly like i know we have a whole episode about it and yes i read the article literally i started reading the article i was like i'm ashamed of myself for even giving this attention mm. i was yeah, like i wish i could read the article without giving it a view without giving it a view without yeah. giving it more attention without yeah. giving this I person more shit. clout like i i hate it i hate the shit it's just digging yeah Dig you're di digging for for the gratification of being the person who took someone else down. Yeah. Congratulations, that's what you did. Good and job. this is not a person who was pretending, as you said, yeah. to be anything that would be, uh, that this evidence would be the contrary. This have nothing to do and with anything, And some of this bro. stuff is so banal. Yeah. Like, let's assume it's all true. Let's assume it's all true for which, a second. Which I Yeah, just, yeah, but just for the sake yeah, of the experiment, not, right? But. I kind of was like, well, this is a much more interesting Andrew Huberman than I thought. Yeah. I, was, I was like, this is, all right, you're kind of cool, <laughs> like, you know? Yeah. It's like, you know, it's a, a little bit of darkness, a little bit of dimensionality to someone actually makes them more interesting A little to bit me. of humanness. Yeah, and a little bit of humanity. And yeah. it's like, I don't think he presents himself as this perfect person. I think he presents himself as a scientist and he stays in that lane. Uh, actually, can I fight you on that a little okay, bit? Okay, go. I don't think that he explicitly says, like, I am trying to be a good person. Mm -hmm. But I do think that out of all of the kind of, like, thought leaders that are trendy in our time, mm -hmm. I do think that Andrew Huberman does play the nice guy a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, I love the information that he provides. Mm -hmm. And honestly, the only qualm I have against uh, him is that he's too much of a nice guy. Personally I speaking. I, like, Jordan yeah. Peterson has, like, an edge. and it, Sure. It, it, makes him dislikable right it's impossible to listen to you chris williamson is willing to say things that are like not you know people don't like women still get the sympathy that when things go wrong that mm -hmm. there is there is a support structure there whereas men are being accused of not only being the architects of their own misery but of everybody else's as well mm -hmm. there are people who are like willing to have an edge and andrew huberman like because he's just facts sometimes mm -hmm. and because he's just a little bit not a little bit pretty vanilla mm -hmm. makes me kind of like not as interested Sure, but he's he's just playing his position. Like yeah, he, yeah. He does he doesn't want to be the. I mean, who knows what he actually wants to be? Mm -hmm. But he doesn't present himself as the guy who wants to be known for his personality. He presents yeah. himself as a guy who Science. wants to be known just for the facts. Yeah, and which he, means that anything else to his life is actually irrelevant. Yeah, yeah. and, and uh, from what I've seen, he presents himself with humility. He's like, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm like working on this. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not very good at this. Or mm -hmm. he's even talked about his aggressive tendencies and, mm -hmm. and things like this. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't. Like, I get what you're saying. Like, mm -hmm. he, he seems a little, like, vanilla. But I think a lot of it is just projection. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, because he presents himself this way, then he's trying to be Mr. Perfect. And mm -hmm. he, he's a human. So, I mean, I, we all like to be perceived a certain yeah. way. But honestly, I came out of this. I was like, yo, this, you know, this is got, niggas got sauce. <laughs> <laughs> it's just interesting. It's like, and I, I, I get it. Like, maybe the woman's like, oh, well, this is a role model. So people shouldn't pedestalize him. And that's true. People shouldn't pedestalize him. But I don't think the way they'd stop pedestalizing people is by doing takedowns by bringing on them their down. private life. Yeah, that's yeah, fucked up. Yeah. And I personally, I don't. I think the people who testified were anonymous. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, if you're willing to take someone else's reputation down, then put your reputation on the line. Can you say that? Don't look at me. Yeah. Say that if you're willing to take someone's reputation down, then make sure your reputation is on the line too. If you really think that this guy is a as a dangerous man, is a womanizer, is taking advantage of people, then you should be able to say it, and it should be associated with your name, your face, and your voice. There should be a real accountability. And if you're and, and look, yeah. men, women, gender bullshit aside, I'm like, and if you're willing to do that, I'll hear what you have to say. Mm -hmm. I'm like, if you're willing to do that, I don't care if you got titties or you got a dick. I'm like, cool. Yeah. You have an opinion that's worth listening to because you're willing to stake your reputation on. Yeah, it. that's how I know you actually care enough and you're not just sniping from the shadows. Yeah, you don't, I'm tired of people sniping. Y'all don't from the see shadows. us on this fucking show with masks on, nigga. No, nah, I'm raw, nigga. I ain't got like, pants on right now, nigga. I'm actually a 35 year old white man under this, but <laughs> <laughs> very, very good convincing mask that I've been maintaining consistently for years. Got him, David. Andrew Huberman, mm -hmm. based on this article, mm -hmm. was accused of having multiple women unbeknownst to them having multiple relationships affairs that's right? the most egregious claim the most egregious claim is that he had many women who thought they were his only one and that they were in monogamous relationships and by many i mean like six you know so it sounds like a tuesday for me you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> real play for real <laughs> you know what i'm saying it's like step your shit up andrew yeah. anyway um so yeah he was <laughs> we wild uh so he was accused of having multiple relationships with these women and they didn't know and then through a 
c c connecting with this reporter they found out like oh my god like there's other women that are involved in his life <laughs> and that's why he's been flaky and that's why he hasn't shown up or that's why whatever whatever so that's okay. that's the that's what the article is about mm -hmm. and somehow we started talking about how his podcast is sponsored by ag1 mm -hmm. and ag1 might not be the most reputable company based on this one person's opinion mm -hmm. and that's what we're talking about it's like you're at the end of the day, like, have you heard the definition of reaching? Trying to portray a character. Exactly. You're That's just, exactly. It's like, even look at the fucking article itself. It's a, a serious shot of Andrew Huberman on the front cover and it's in black and white. It's not a, it's not a coincidence that it's in black and white. Mm. It's not a coincidence that he looks sad. It's not a coincidence that like in one of the first fucking lines they talked about, like, I realized that not only I liked his podcast, but liked other women who liked his podcast. Mm -hmm. He must be in some way better than the rest of us mm. so it's just again assume it's yep. like projecting onto him that he thinks he's better than the you. author almost writes it like she felt like she was in a relationship and was betrayed the author <laughs> was mad she didn't get dicked down by andrew <laughs> it's like it's okay honey yeah, yeah like, you, you so good. listen to his podcast yeah all right? it's yeah. A, he doesn't make you a fucking uh yeah. anti-feminist jesus christ uh -huh. there's a line in there she says the problem with a man always working on himself is that he may also be working on you it's like are you are you are you writing the intro to like a murder mystery shit or are you just projecting and creating conjecture so you can create like you said this character of this mm -hmm. dark shady man it's like and some fucking suburban housewife is reading this article like oh my god did you know and it's like come on you're manipulating people's emotions which is fine you're an author great at the cost of somebody's livelihood mm -hmm. at the cost of somebody's reputation something they worked very fucking hard on can you have some fucking honor yeah. for that like, yeah jesus christ where is your honor dirtbag you are an absolute disgrace and it's it's you know i think there's a time for exposing all of this stuff yeah. and it's with the when you're actually engaging with the person and mm -hmm. you're going in depth about their life story mm -hmm. with their contribution yeah. not you wrote a hit piece and then you hit him up would you like to comment on this hit piece it's like no i would not like to comment on this fucking hit piece yeah. get out of here you fucking parasite yeah like of course that's gonna be would you like to comment on the fact that you have a small dick yeah <laughs> like, what it's like i'm good thanks <laughs> <laughs> it's like what the fuck yeah. yeah so it's like you know when you read for instance the, the steve jobs uh, biography mm -hmm. It, he's portrayed as a as a nuanced man and there's a lot of dark shit in there imagine uh, but you can tell it's with the intent of giving a comprehensive yeah. as neutral view as possible of a complicated man yeah honestly. this is a hit piece though yeah this is a hit piece i mean look at even some of the comments like this is so stupid like why do you even include this like talking about his relationship with his dog like how, how much i guess they're trying to portray him as neurotic about his dog so you're trying to find any piece of when, evidence you can use to support your fucking unsem so, so so, so a, a friend of an ex when they were together he was buzzing anxious he's like oh my dog needs his blanket this way and i'm like your dog is just laying there and super cozy why are you being weird about the blanket because he cares about his fucking dog and if he's a little bit it means he's a misogynist yeah if he's a little bit neurotic <laughs> as the father of this being who is completely reliant on him i fucking understand it means he hates women <laughs> right it's like <laughs> look, what is it like wh wh you, uncorrelated information yeah it's like this is totally irrelevant <laughs> i was thinking about it i was like oh what if he is actually this guy who's trying to be perfect mm -hmm. and he's failing at it mm -hmm. and if there's dishonesty you know this dishonesty is straightforwardly not good mm -hmm. it's bad right yeah, yeah. obviously mm -hmm. but also there's some stuff here it's like oh okay well he just sounds like he's an extreme dude mm -hmm. he's a bit weird in his own way mm -hmm. and that's and like, exactly what i would expect from us. a greatly successful person who, yeah. who's really worked on himself yeah. and, and is trying his best to live the life that he wants. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's like, uh, there's a, again, I think the one point that I really want to hammer home is that they're just reaching so hard and just trying to find, yeah. he wasn't, he was too nice to his dog. It's like, yeah. Jesus Christ. Or, or there's this $250,000 microscope that's gathering dust in his lab. It's not really, uh, he's not really running his lab. He hasn't cleaned he's, out his belly button in years. Yeah, yeah. So basically like making little, little uh, insinuations that he's not a legit professor. Yeah. He's, and not, people he's not a legit who, scientist. And people who are not media literate, they're just, that's going into their fucking subconscious and it's just informing this character. And they don't even know that they don't even but their impression is exactly. negative, 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 bad, exactly. bad man bad man yeah there's a there's a moment in the article that says uh how comfortable one feels with the science propagated mm -hmm. it's a word that suggests that propagated, it's not real yeah, yeah. Like it. fine choice of words how comfortable one feels with the science propagated on Huberman lab depends entirely on how much leeway one is willing to give a man who expounds for multiple hours a week on the subjects well outside his area of expertise like excuse me he's a yeah. popularizer of science like whoa. he brings on other guests to talk about these things exactly it's like what you're he's actually giving an opinion an informed take to the best of his ability you know i know he didn't treat these women right or i think I, he didn't so now that i think about you know 
he's never been qualified to talk about what he's been talking about. It's like, wow, he talked for five hours about what? chemistry, but he's a Jesus neurobiologist. Christ. Did you ever think about the fact that he talks about things that he doesn't have a PhD in? Can you spell neuron, sweetheart? Definitely Damn. not. <laughs> if the person who likes you the least in your life is allowed to write an article on you, what would they say? Yeah. Right? And also, would it be true? <laughs> like, imagine that, right? Narcissism comes up consistently. One of the favorite things that people like to say, especially about men. Yeah. Oh, narcissist, narcissist, narcissist. You, hold on, just to hit people with facts real quick. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I heard a, about a study, the actual psychologist, <laughs> who uh, researched the population, mm -hmm. and they found that, first of all, narcissism is like an actual, like, clinical, like, mental disorder, yep. right? And they're like, oh, Actually, clinically, about one to two percent of the population are narcissists. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because it seems like everybody's ex boyfriend is, is a narcissist. A narcissist. So and, we must any, all any, be dating any, the same any, guy. Right? <laughs> any ex boyfriend you don't like, he's a narcissist. Yeah, definitely, hundred yeah, 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 yeah. percent. Yeah, just like every girl that ever broke my heart, she was like, she hope. Yeah, it's, it's basically the same thing. It's the same shit. It's the same shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, so I'm, I'm personally tired of this, and it, it, it makes it unsafe to be a man. Hmm? It makes me feel unsafe to be a man. It's like, oh wow, anyone can just randomly go to a reporter not put their name, their face, their reputation on the line, say a bunch of shit that's their interpretation of their inter yeah. reaction with me, yeah. and then write an article, have an article written, and then get to insert a line, oh, he did not respond for comment. Almost as if it's implying that, he, oh, he must have something to hide if he's not willing to defend himself. Okay. How long are we going to let this playbook run? Yeah, okay, okay, hold on. Before we get too hot, <sighs> just to be honest, is, am I allowed to be real? Yeah. Okay, cool. Speaking to myself and to every other great man and becoming great man out there, you're still allowed to be great. And you have full permission and full, I don't wanna say safety, because I know it can feel unsafe to be great. Uh, but just know there are people who are still rooting for you. You will have your character assassination attempts. You will have all these things. And it is worth it. What you are gonna create is worth it the value that you want to provide, whether you're a human or you're a fucking break dancer, I don't give a fuck. Uh, I know that the spotlight and the top of the mountain can seem scary because that's the best place to get shot, <laughs> right? And what else would we live for, you know? Yep. You don't need to be perfect to be great. Yeah, I'd rather get shot on top on the top of the mountain than sit at the bottom of the mountain complaining about the people at the top. Yeah, yeah. And I thought about this. I was like, oh, I expect an article like this to be written about me one day. Yeah, 100%. Seriously. Yeah. And I was like, I wonder what they'll say. Yeah. Genuinely, I wonder what they'll say. Um, and I've never sinned in my life, so there's not. I, no, no. Of course. Um, I'm a sinner. So. I do propagate myself to be a perfect and angelic human being. Except for that one bitch that did kind of fuck her over. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think sometimes when people write these articles, mm -hmm. maybe there's a subconscious part of them or even a conscious part of them that thinks, oh, well, this will correct behavior. This will hold men accountable and men can't get away with this shit if I call it out this way. Mm, it's a fear but tactic. It's, it's gross. Yeah, it's a, it's a fear-based way of addressing a real issue, mm -hmm. but it's a fear-based ineffective way because all you're actually going to do mm -hmm. is you're going to make all men afraid of afraid themselves of being great and afraid of being great and afraid of women yeah right because you never know what some anonymous woman is going to say about you rather than actually a approaching you and having yeah. an adult conversation about it yeah so this is not correcting behavior this is not making the culture better it's making everyone scared and it also makes men resentful it doesn't Genuinely. bring anybody closer together yeah right? it doesn't bring people it doesn't into make connection. you trust women more yeah, yeah it doesn't make me trust women it yeah, actually yeah. just builds resentment so this is not elevating Kaizen official stamp. This is not for the culture. Not for the culture. Not for the culture. No. This is the best comment. Bro, I read that article. They trip, man. If you handle six girls at once, your protocols are going to be top tier. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I was trying to say. It's like, bro, I'm like, re respect the game, bro. <laughs> like, you know, like, I'll, I'll maybe got a little messy in there, but it's like, I was like, I don't respect you less for being able to hold six women down. I'm like, damn, okay, man. Yeah. What are we doing? I don't, know, man. I don't know. But I know one thing that we should do. Subscribe to For the Culture for and Andrew Mid Huber's podcast. <laughs> Alright, y'all. Good night. Bye bye. If you don't already subscribe on YouTube, please do subscribe. Please do subscribe.